Well, I want to share a story with you that really impacted my life in a huge way. Uh, way back in uh, 1974, I had an opportunity to go to Israel, and I wanted to go because there was a conference there, and Catherine Kuhlman was one of the speakers, and she was one of my heroes, an amazing ministry, mighty miracles, signs and wonders, and all of that. And there were a number of other speakers, but I wanted to go because it was Israel. I'd never been there before. And then Catherine Kuhlman was there. So off we go. I went with uh, a dear friend of mine at the time, and we were in the Congress Hall in Jerusalem, and Catherine was amazing. But it was a man named David Duplessis that got through to me like I have never been touched in my life. Now, the backstory was I was so pumped about going to Israel that I went on a three week water fast. And I'm like, God, I so want to meet you over there. I want to be ready to go to the Holy Land, you know. And so I was ready spiritually, perhaps more than I'd anticipated. But David Duplessis got up and uh, he began talking out of John 17 about the importance of loving one another. And he began pointing out things like, some of you are sitting back in judgment, uh, judging others because they're different than you or in your opinion, this and that. But my question for you is why can't you love them? And that was me, I was sitting there very self-righteous, um, judging the people on the platform and around, you know, thinking, why are they up there? They're probably not even saved and things like that. But he kept hammering that point home, why can't you love them? And quoting those verses about loving one another from John 17. And friends, I got undone in that meeting. And by undone, I mean undone. I could not hold myself together. I lost it publicly, and I was weeping and wailing and falling apart, crying uncontrollably. And, and I'm saying to myself, what is the matter with you? Just get it together. But I just seemingly could not. And I was so overwhelmed by the, the conviction of self-righteous. You know, my, my whole focus at the time was very Jesus-centered and, and very much uh, full of striving and trying to memorize and do what the Word of God said to do. But it was lacking this stuff called love. And I got baptized in the love of God that day to the point of being out of control, which is, was new to me at the time and it's still very unusual. And yet it changed me. I went home to the hotel after a day of sightseeing and conference. And as I laid down to sleep, all of a sudden these waves of his presence would begin to come over me. And, uh, and it would increase and increase. And I would just be lying awake, weeping, thinking about, God, why are you being so good to me and so kind to me? And for that entire week, I think I slept about three or four hours for the whole week. I just couldn't sleep through it. And it got more and more intense. And I remember saying one time, God, if one more wave comes over me like that, I don't think I'm gonna live through it. But I did live through it. And I came home from that realizing something had shifted, but that didn't stop the busyness and the, and the hardness of life. Uh, it came anyway, but something was different on the inside. Well, 10 years on from that encounter, uh, Carol and I, who got married in 79, started our church in her hometown in about 1981. And long story there, mission trip to Indonesia, God called us to start that church, and we did. But 
from 74 to 84, 10 years, we had a man named Jack Winter came and he came with the theology of the Father's love. And it was amazing how Jack uh, put the theology to the encounter that I had had many years before. And wow, it just made such a difference. And it became a foundational piece for me and for our church, and now for our Toronto church, which we started in 1987. And we, we majored in the, in the love of God. And I, I just can't believe to this day that it took me so long to figure out what is the most important thing in Christianity. Meeting Jesus for sure, but then being rooted and grounded in love, like it says in the book of Ephesians, chapter three, verse 17, be rooted and grounded in that love so that you may know how big this deal is, the length, width, breadth, and height, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you and I can be filled with all of the fullness of God. And I realized that that encounter many years ago prepared me to be able to receive a greater infilling of the Holy Spirit. I thought it was gonna die, actually. It was so intense. It was wonderful. It was so comforting. It was so life-giving, yet so intense. I didn't see how I was gonna live through it, but I did live through it, and it changed me. And so then we had our uh, first church, and then we planted Toronto. And isn't it interesting that from 74 was the encounter, uh, 84, we got the theology to go with it. And then in 94, the Holy Spirit poured out on our Toronto church in a, an encounter with him that I will never forget. But I believe that we were rooted and grounded in love from that beginning. And so that's become one of our main core values that we uh, emphasize that we teach, that we walk in, that we live. You know, our, our theme message is walk in God's love and then give it away so that it, it's not just a teaching about love, but it's actually a revelation that he has given to us. And I'm thinking now of the words of Jesus when he said, uh, no one really knows me except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And then he said this, and the one to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And the Lord found me that day and chose to reveal his love to me. And it was life-changing. And so when revival broke out on us, and that happened all those wonderful years, uh, multiplied hundreds and thousands of people would get up off the floor talking about an encounter they had with the Father's love. They felt loved for the first time ever. And that's the central focus of our faith, friends. It's the cross, yes, but what's behind the cross is John 3:16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is love to the utmost. And I would love to pray for you right now that God would make you hungry, first of all, to have an encounter with him and with his loving presence that would change you right to your foundations like he has done with Carol and I. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come and bless these dear viewers that are watching right now. I pray that you would choose to reveal the Father's love to them, Lord Jesus. Open it up. Let us know how deeply you love the human race that you have created, your children, your sons and your daughters. 
And God, when we discover that all consuming love of God that fills us full and overflowing, may it change us foundationally so that we can then go out and love the world to life, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with them and bringing them into that family in his mighty name. So Father, come and fall upon them now. Bring healing, bring freedom, bring deliverance, and bring that intimate relationship that we're all longing for more of so that everyone finds their significance in you. I pray that in the name of Jesus. More and more and more. Amen. God bless you.